Hello, and uh, welcome to the latest episode of My Life as a Critic. I am professional film critic Sean Patrick, and on this show, I uh, look back on my own work as a film critic. I critique myself and my writing, and uh, also re-critique the movie with uh, you know a few years of experience under my belt. And uh, that's the show. Uh, if you think that's an interesting premise, then stay tuned. If not, uh, we'll talk later. Maybe <laughs> I I I just uh, I find this type of self reflection to be interesting to me. I don't know if it'd be interesting to you, but I keep doing the show, so I'm definitely interested. I hope you're interested, and if you are, feel free to leave comments, uh, positive or negative, however you feel. Uh, on this show, on this episode, we're going to talk about the movie Baba Hotep, and. I'm not sure how I feel about this movie, or I don't really actually remember how I feel about this movie. I've not read the review because I like when I go into this, I like to go into it kind of blind and try and see if I can trick my memory into rem uh, being where I was when I wrote the review. But I don't remember liking Bubba Hotep. Uh, I kind of feel like I was disappointed by it, but it's been so. It's been twelve years. Since I, it looks like I wrote this review back in 2004. Uh, the film actually came out in 2002, but it didn't arrive until in my area until 2004. So that's when I got a chance to look at it and write about it for uh, Bickit.com. That's B-I-K-K-I-T dot com, a website that no longer exists, although you can find it on archive.org. If you want to go read my old stuff there. You're more than welcome to. I'm going to cover it all on this show, so you can just keep listening to this, as opposed to going to archive.org and looking up Bickett and looking up me. But <laughs> I'm going to cover it all here, so you can just listen to this. Uh, so let's see. Let me see if I can remember how I felt about Bubba Hotep uh, by reading my own review. Bruce Campbell made his name with arguably the best B-movie horror film series in history, Evil Dead. Army of Darkness cemented his legend, but since that film's 1993 release, Campbell has not been able to rise to that level of genius. Until now, that is. Well, apparently I liked it. <laughs> I mean, I'm a huge Army of Darkness fan and a huge Evil Dead and Evil Dead 2 fan, so apparently, <laughs> if I'm calling this movie a genius on that level, I must have liked it. I don't remember that, though. That's weird. With the release of Bubba Hotep, who was released in late 2002 and just reached my small hole in the universe in April 2004, Campbell has recaptured that vibe that made Ash a legend. Playing an aged king of rock and roll fighting a mummy, Campbell reaches a level that flies well past camp and into a realm that only a Bruce Campbell B-movie could reach. Just before Elvis Presley was found dead in his Graceland mansion, the real Elvis visited a man, visited a man that was believed to be the best Elvis impersonator in the world. His name is Sebastian Half, and the deal he made was to become Elvis, allowing the real king to go into hiding, pretending to be an Elvis impersonator. Part of the deal the two men made was that Elvis could switch back whenever he wanted. Before he could, Sebastian Half died, and the real Elvis fell off a stage during a performance and landed himself in a Texas old folks' home, where he's laid up, been laid up for more than 20 years. Ellis fell into a drab, depressing routine of watching roommates pass away and an exciting sponge baths from the bitchy nursing staff, all the while lamenting the loss of his fame and fortune. Ellis' only friend and the only man who believes he really is Elvis is a man who has convinced himself he is John F. Kennedy. This despite being a black man. Ossie Davis plays the unusual role. According to Jack, they died him <laughs> after, he sh after they shot him. It is uh, Jack that first becomes aware of a peculiar series of deaths in the home. Peculiar because they are precipitated by the appearance of a huge cockroach-looking thing and electrical surges. Soon, the two friends discover that the real peculiar thing is that there is a mummy in a cowboy hat that is sucking the life out of old people to keep itself alive. Now, these two legends must find a way to save their home and themselves from a creature that Elvis dubs a Bubba Hotep. Just the concept alone, Elvis and JFK versus a mummy is brilliant enough. Then is directed by Don Coscarelli, the man who directed Phantasm. It reaches another level of cheesy brilliance. Coscarelli only knows one way to direct a film, and that is with a minimalist palette, as, as minimalist a palette as possible. He's a veteran director, but he can never be confused for an artist. However, it is exactly that lack of precision and skill that is so perfectly captured uh, such a strange, weird movie. It is in my honest opinion that in this case, it takes a bad director to make a bad movie transcend its badness into something wholly brilliant. 
<laughs> campy, kooky, over-the-top ridiculousness abounds in Bubba Hotep. From the gutter mouth dialogue to the cheese ball look to a mummy in a cowboy hat, Bubba is an ingenious B-movie that returns Bruce Campbell to his so-bad-it's-good brilliance. This is a film that has to be seen to be believed. That is my 2004 review of Bubba Hotep. I am, uh, <laughs> I, I'm really excited to watch this again. Like, I didn't remember liking it this much. But uh, now that I have read my review, I'm actually really excited about this episode. <laughs> I'm going to watch uh, Bubba Hotep now. I'll come back. I will re-review the film. Hopefully I will remain as excited as I am now. And uh, well, we'll talk again in a moment. I am trying for the life of me to figure out what it was that convinced me that I didn't like this movie. Uh, <laughs> this movie is awesome. I just, I'm just watching it now. I just, I'm, I'm blown away by how how much I really love this movie. It is just among the goofiest things ever conceived. Elvis <laughs> and John F. Kennedy fighting him, fighting a mummy in, in a cowboy outfit. <laughs> I mean, it's just, it is just so incredibly, wonderfully, beautifully goofy. Uh, and and Don Coscarelli's kind of amateurish direction is just exactly what this movie needs. I mean, uh, he he's he's not a great director. He's got a lot of kind of old school kind of tricks uh, that he's good at, uh, and and he's got a sense of you know time comic timing and pace. But uh, you know he, he's got a lot of goofy horror movie tricks that he pulls. It's a very it's a B movie director, and and, and the, the kind of B movie skill level is applied to this movie but that's exactly what this movie needs so Coscarelli's kind of a perfect director for this uh Bruce Campbell is so incredible and I mean even dramatic at times I mean you buy into this whole thing I mean the idea is that this ancient mummy for some reason has uh, gotten out of its uh, sarcophagus and it's stealing the souls of the elderly at this old folks home that happens to be where Elvis is. <laughs> Elvis in this uh, movie story kind of, I guess, supposedly still alive, I guess. Uh, Campbell plays uh, a guy, Elvis, as somebody who switched places with a Elvis impersonator years ago to escape fame. <laughs> and then before he could turn himself back into being Elvis, uh, he got into, a, he fell into a coma. And when he woke up, the guy who took his place was dead and he couldn't become Elvis again <laughs> and nobody believed that he was Elvis they believed this he was this uh, Elvis impersonator which he may be he may be crazy the movie doesn't really specify <laughs> the, he buys into the fact that he's Elvis but the movie leaves enough room for you to believe that he may just be an old guy who you know is kind of cracked in the head uh, Ossie Davis plays Jack Kennedy <laughs> Who um, a man who claims to be President Kennedy, who uh, his idea is, and he's also likely crazy. Well, he is crazy. <laughs> he's a crazy guy, but uh, he's his notion is that he was well, after he got shot in Dallas, he was saved. But to uh, hold up the lie, they dyed him black <laughs> and then stashed him away for years and years until finally he woke up in this nursing home in Texas for some reason. So there's the, those are the two main characters. Then, of course, there's the mummy, and Elvis and Jack Kennedy team up to battle the mummy and try and keep the mummy from stealing more souls in the old folks' home. And it is just so balls-out goofy. And just the, the comic timing of this movie is incredible. Bruce Campbell's confidence his Elvis is just fantastic uh, the it doesn't lean on the old people jokes really all that much I mean it makes a few of them but it doesn't really lean on that as the crux of the humor the crux of the humor is just this outlandish idea uh, this just completely nuts idea that Elvis and uh, Jack Kennedy <laughs> as a black guy are battling a Texas sized mummy and <laughs> That's and that's really the main thrust of the humor of the film. If you if you enjoy that ridiculousness, that absurdity, then you're gonna love this movie. And I, I really dig that. I really do. I I just buy into that so big. That is such a great goofball idea. It's just wonderful in so many ways. 
and I mean Ossie Davis and Bruce Campbell are great together. But man, I mean, just every moment Bruce Campbell is on screen, he's just dominant. And it is it. I don't know what it was. I'm trying to figure it out because for some reason I convinced myself that I didn't actually like this movie. I completely forgot about my review, which is a really positive review. I called the movie genius back in, back in 2004. But 12 years later, I, I remember t- I've talked about this movie on on I Hate Critics and. Uh, if you don't know I, I Hate Critics, if you've not been introduced, that's the regular podcast I do uh, every week. Um, you can find out more at IHateCritics.com. I believe I've talked about this movie off offhandedly and said I didn't care for it. And that's so not the case. I love this movie. <laughs> I don't know what convinced me I didn't. This movie is fantastic. It is, uh, I mean, is it as good as Army of Darkness or Evil Dead 2? It's not quite that good, but it, it's... It's in the ballpark for sure, and if he's, I'm, <laughs> I, I really, really loved it. I really do, and I'm just so blown away by how much I love it. It is so much better than I remember it, even from, from what I apparently, well, I shouldn't say remember it because I didn't remember it. <laughs> My memory completely failed me on this movie. I'm so glad I got to watch this again. That's why I do this show. That's why I do this podcast is so I can <laughs> is so I can have a moment like this where I like, "Oh wow, I really did like that movie." <laughs> or I completely forgot that I liked that movie, which is what just happened to me. Well, thank you uh for for listening to this uh episode of uh My Life as a Critic. I hope you uh enjoyed it as much as I did, and I hope you'll uh watch Bubba Hotep again. This movie is <laughs> fantastic it's for a very specific audience you have to love absurdity you have to have love of the absurd humor of uh bruce campbell but if you do i mean bubba hotep is right up your alley